Happy Thursday, everyone. This is Crystal Lee Moore Lucier, also known as your home sweet home 519 realtor, Crystal Lee Moore, with Roy LePage Triland Realty in London, Ontario. And this is Realtor Life, a fun and entertaining way to learn about life in the trenches as a real estate professional in Ontario, and hopefully to learn some valuable lessons and takeaways. This is episode 14. Let's get going. This week's five circle goals, inspired by by Buffini and Company, which are goals for the five circles of our lives, spiritual, family, business, financial, and personal. I hope you're choosing goals for yourselves every week and writing them down. My spiritual goal this week is to continue to find time to spend meditating and playing the ukulele and to listen to Elevation Church on Sunday. My family goal this week is to find time to spend with my family in the middle of busy realtor life and to book an Easter photo shoot with my brother-in-law, Reed Lucier, for our family. For my business goal, I just got accepted into a part-time and virtual MBA program with the University of Fredericton with a focus on real estate leadership, and I'm very excited to get started, and I already have my first textbook. For my financial goal, I'm continuing to save and limit online or needless spending. I feel like I should be sending an apology letter to Amazon for the lost revenue. And finally, for my personal goal, I'm listening to motivational messages every morning to increase my energy in the mornings and focus on getting more steps in during the day. My amazing husband and I just started a new fitness challenge with MedPoint here in London, and I'm pretty excited. I hope that hearing about my five circle goals has inspired you to choose or write down your own five circle goals. I would love to hear more about them. You can go to my website at www.crystalleemore.ca to find my contact info or send me an email at crystalleemore at royalapage.ca. Now, story time. Commission. We hear about it. We talk about it. We charge it. But what is it all about? Where does it go? And how are you supposed to talk about it with clients? People tend to think that commission in real estate is an expense, something you are paying for. I try to explain to my clients that commission on a real estate transaction is an investment in the sale of their home. Just giving a number usually doesn't help. Sure, there are going to be some clients that are fine with the number, whatever you say it is, but I like to break it down for those who process so that we're all on the same page. Also, it's important to focus on the value they're getting and not just the number. I won't be using actual numbers in this episode because there are several business models in the marketplace and all have their own pros and cons. We all operate differently and official answer, that's okay. Also, we're not permitted to say or insinuate that there is a typical average or usual commission rate that is charged by agents in the market. That said, as a real estate professional, my sellers invest a percentage of the sale price in their home sale into the commission fee to the brokerage. And buyers don't usually understand when they get started that we are paid to help them from that same seller commission. Remember, educate, educate, educate. The first thing I want to point out is that the average person has no idea where the commission dollars go. The first guess is into your pocket as a real estate agent. Dare to dream, we would all be having money parties on Thursdays. The other thing I want to point out is that people naturally believe that paying less commission will automatically mean saving money and therefore getting more money in their pocket. Now that would only be true if a house would always sell for the exact same price, regardless of the market, the condition of the house, the marketing, home preparation, the price, or the timing. And that's not the case. Part of our job is to show clients why the commission on a real estate transaction is an investment on their sale, not an expense to save money on. It should be a lot more important to the seller how much money they get in their pocket in the, at the end of the day, not yours. So commission plus HST, everyone's favorite sales tax, is charged to the seller upon the successful sale of their home with the brokerage. When I sit down with my clients before we list, I break it down into two categories. The first part is the percentage that we're going to offer agents who are bringing their clients who are qualified in and hopefully sending an offer in. 
If we've done our job well, agents from far and wide will come for a chance at getting that commission. In Southern Ontario, we see a lot of 2.5% and 2% offerings, as well as higher and lower. The key is to choose a strategy that you and your clients feel is best for the transaction and of course, for the clients. The other part of the percentage is divided in three ways. The first, to prepare and market the home. Everyone is different, but my listing package includes a staging consultation and the full professional staging of the home, a full clean, a few hours of handiwork in the home and professional photography and video. We also have a top rated marketing system, an exclusive network of agents and qualified buyers who we market to as well. The second part, with Royal LePage Canada being one of the biggest and most trusted names in Canada, devotes an amazing amount of time to energy, resources, and SEO to be front and center in front of technology and client connection. Our real estate website is second only to realtor.ca for home searches, and our client retention and connection systems and services are the gold standard. All of this comes at a cost, however, and the next part of the commission split goes to the brokerage and the company. When you're just starting out, it's key to rely on and refer to the collective experience of your brokerage and your colleagues. You may only have a few months of experience, but you and the brokerage have years. That leaves the last portion, which goes to me for my time and efforts, and which, of course, gets divided into business expenses, marketing, insurance, licensing costs, and taxes. It sounds like a lot to go through, but people like to understand their investment. And you are building a business based on integrity, relationships, and referrals, which means that you're going to have more success in the industry and sell more homes. The average agent in North America sells something like four to six houses per year, and it costs around $30,000 per year just to be a real estate agent. Depending on your math skills and whether you've had to refresh those skills during the pandemic as a part-time teacher for your children, the average real estate agent is in big trouble financially. You can do very well in this business by being an expert at what you do, focusing on helping your clients achieve their goals and be there every step of the way and beyond. If I have done my job right and properly conveyed my value, we move forward and have an amazing experience together. I will dedicate a future episode to the slippery slope of cutting commission and what I have learned from amazing sources like Brian Buffini, Royal LePage, and the Kathleen Black coaching system. For now, I will say this. Choose the commission structure and amount that works for you and stand by it. You'll be tasked with negotiating for your clients on the value of their home, and you want to show them that you know how to convey value and negotiate on their behalf and stand by it. After sales service, here's what happened with my clients. My first time buyer clients finally got an accepted offer. And after a lot of creative thinking and hard work from me, the listing agent and their lender, closing day arrived at last. I had a local sign company make a wooden sign for their front porch that said welcome home with their name on it and a large welcome home sign in front of the fence where they'd be parking. Everything was set. They picked up the keys and gave me a call. Are you having a picnic in the living room? I was so excited for them. The furnace won't, won't turn on and it's freezing in here, came the reply. Uh oh. The listing agent had messaged me earlier to request that they call in to make sure the gas was on. They were told that it was on when they called. Well, it wasn't on. So I called and I got some information, but they would only speak to my clients. So my clients had to call again and were told that the gas had been shut off after all, and they would have to send a technician. Oh dear. This was late on a Tuesday evening and my clients have three children and one is a baby. And it was the middle of winter. There was no telling how long it would take. So I grabbed one of the heaters we had purchased when our gas had been shot off accidentally, a couple of chairs, some blankets, some snacks, and some beer, and I headed over. They were incredibly grateful as it was getting really cold in the house and they had been huddled around the stove for warmth. Now, technically, once the deal closes, I don't have a lot of power. The official amount of power I have actually is 0%, none. And while it wasn't quote unquote my problem, 
This is not how I roll. They were my clients, my people, and I worked so hard to get them this house. There was no way that I was just gonna cut and run. Now, it's important to note that you have to be careful not to overstep with the legal side of things. I checked with the lawyers before I did anything and was advised about what I could do and what I could not do. At the end, the gas was turned on and they were very, very happy. Lessons. When it comes to commission, make sure that you understand that it is an investment, not an expense, and then explain that to your clients. Work towards showing your clients value and make sure that you are explaining it properly. I recently lost a listing in my new market to a lower commission agent because I did not explain my value adequately. I also showed my value clearly to some other clients and got them an incredible price for their home. Don't get offended if your clients want to understand commission. We're not doctors or lawyers. It's a fair conversation. Just be ready to explain it. Work on being there for the over and above things for your clients. And when things go wrong, 